Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome back to more Surviving Mars Below and Beyond, playing in maximum difficulty 1,165%, which is ludicrous. We've launched our rocket back to Earth. It is now about to arrive. There it is. We are immediately going to pause and not waste a single second, because we are still hoping that we can get our colonists onto Mars by Sol 15. We'll either make it, or we're going to be off by a couple of in-game hours. It's going to be tight, so there's no time to waste. Let's go ahead and immediately find our founders. Remember, this is the only group of colonists we are going to receive for free. There's a few filters we need to do. First off, specialization, tourist is off. Not allowed. Second, the sexy perk taketh priority. Are you serious? There's only three? Darn it all the heck, I would have loved to have had a lot more of that. So the sexy perk increases your natural birth rate. It's very good. A sexy vegan? Okay, I, I, I guess I can see that. Sexy nerd? No, that's just a fantasy. That's not a real thing. Sexy rugged coward? Oh. Yeah, 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 okay. Coward is a terrible trait. Um, from disasters, because we are going to have lots of disasters. But, um, hopefully we can either survive disasters sufficiently so that she doesn't commit suicide or whatever. I mean, this is going to be dangerous, but we're going to have to go with it because that extra birth rate is really, really important. All right, the next thing we need to do, since that's all the sexy characters, is go to age group and remove all middle-aged. Because, unfortunately, middle-aged means less fertile time period. So we need to go for youth and adults. Survivor, nerd, melancholic, blah, blah, blah. You know what, no, we can filter this by even more perks. Hang on. Let's go ahead and turn on workaholic and party animal. Party animal gives extra comfort from social, which we will have. And workaholic means I can literally work them for even more performance, and if I give them heavy workloads and long shifts, they don't get upset. Which is great, we like that. Alcoholic party animal enthusiast. Hmm. Alright, I guess we can work with that. Party animal enthusiast hippie. All very good. Yeah, and actually hippie gives uh, comfort in gardens and stuff as well, so that's fine. A workaholic, sure. Another workaholic, sure. Fit and party animal, okay. Rugged workaholic, sure. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking that maybe this one's not as good. Let's actually just lock in all the ones that have nothing but positive perks, because there's like no downsides to this at all. Enthusiast, workaholic, loner. You might think that loner's bad, but it's actually fine, because we're not going to have any domes with a high population for a while anyway. Party animal, composed, melancholic. Um, if you're at low morale, this is a problem, but otherwise it's not so bad. And then composed. Now, see, I don't care that much about composed. So the next question, before I go ahead and start refining the filters even further, is what is our current male-to-female ratio? Because we need to maximize our potential pairing off. So six males and six females. How many males do we have right now? One, two, three, four, five. So I need one more male candidate. Okay, let's remove these guys real quick. And let's go back to filter for a second. And let's see if there's another... Let's see, we can remove some flaws. Let's say Glutton, for example. Um, I don't really care... I don't care that much about Whiner, I suppose. I definitely am not okay with Lazy or Idiot. So we'll turn those off. And then, as far as other perks... What would be good for us? Compose? No. Enthusiast? Eh. Fit? No. Gamer? Definitely not. In fact, Gamer's a downside. That just increases the odds that they're going to want things like, you know, gaming, which requires electronics, which we are not providing for a while. We have no geniuses, unfortunately. Hippie is a thing. Nerds? Okay. Religious is pretty decent. Rugged's okay, but shouldn't be necessary. And survivor shouldn't be necessary either, assuming nothing goes wrong. Um, I guess hippie would be fine. Let's try for that. Do we have another male candidate? Yes. A survivor workaholic whiner. You know, with the workaholic trait, I can accept that. So now we just need two female candidates. Let's go to the sex of the character and select female. And we have an alcoholic party animal enthusiast. All right, we've seen you before. And a party animal composed melancholic. Honestly, I think they're both all right. So let me just look through this real quick and make sure there's nothing on here that I can't handle. All of this seems about as reasonable as we can get. I would have liked to have had more sexy characters. I would have loved to have had no whiners or no cowards or anything. But that doesn't seem to be an option for us. As far as other characters, we can have things like just a hippie. But like, meh? That doesn't do me a lot of good. Vegan is fine. I mean, whenever there are no ranches, they just have, like, default extra comfort. And we're not going to use ranches because I've never built a ranch in this game ever because... Why? And the plants are fine. Yeah, this seems okay. This seems absolutely okay. So I'm just going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six males. All right. 
let's go ahead and launch. This is going to be our only roster. And let's pray that they arrive before Soul 15. We have homes ready for them in the dome that I have named Odarka after one of my patrons. Very much thank you for your support. And now, we just go ahead and start working on the rest of our base. China's working on a milestone, first human to Mars. Well, I have the game rules where it takes like three times as long for my uh, rockets to arrive between Earth and Mars, so they're guaranteed to beat me on this one. Nothing I can do, oh well, c'est la vie. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out where we're gonna be placing a few more things on this base. One thing I'm very concerned about is water production, because we don't have an absolute ton that we can work with. I have just enough to supply my fuel refinery, and that's kind of it. We don't even have any more moisture vaporators, so my only option is either to buy some from Earth, which is a bit expensive, but doable, or we try to go for an underground water extractor, which I think is probably the better of the two ideas. Um, we do not, however, have an RC commander, and we would need that in order to build out over here and maintain this area, so our options are to buy an RC commander, which costs 300 million, and it gives us mobility and never requires maintenance, or a moisture vaporator, which costs only 200 million, and at the very least, gets us enough water to survive for now, but we'll quickly start running out. We're gonna need more. So we'll need two of these for 400. Yeah, to be honest, I think I'd rather just go for the RC commander. It gives me more flexibility in the future, especially if one of my RC rovers does break down from a sandstorm. And this should net me more water overall by doing this path. Though, it will cost me machine parts and maintenance, which I'm obviously not thrilled about. Either way, let's buy the RC Commander, bring it back home, and we need to start planning out our water extraction. The other thing we need to do, and I've already set this up a little bit, is think about our heating for when a cold wave inevitably does hit. Now I'm thinking right up against the dome over here makes sense, where it can try to protect my water generation, my fuel, and so on, and reduce how much power we generate. We don't care about protecting our batteries or our solar panels or anything like that, but anything that consumes power, we'd ideally like to be in range of the subsurface heater just to reduce how much gets drawn from the heaters whenever we do have a nasty, nasty cold wave. Also, having this close to the center of the dome is, I think, technically what we need in order to uh, prevent a massive uh, power spike in the dome itself. So this is where I'm placing this. Everything else should be built kind of around it, I think. So for example, it would be good to place a water tower right next to that heater, because we obviously are going to have water storage that we do not want to freeze. It has to be in range of the heater, let's go ahead and plan around that. But oxygen tanks, do I care where they are? No, not really, because guess what? Oxygen tanks don't take power, so I don't care if they're within range. Whereas the Moxie, we could place this sucker down, this does matter, at least a little bit. So we could do something like this, sure. Let's go ahead and place that down. Let's also go ahead and place that water extractor. I was talking about it. We want it to be as close to the base as is possible. Then we need to go ahead and get some of my piping going. I guess we'll do something like this. And how are we going to set this up? I guess we'll just go ahead and do something directly like so. Okay, so that'll all be connected. And then from there, oxygen tank? Yeah, why not? Perfect. It's a good spot for it. Perfect. All right, we'll have an oxygen tank set up as well. Then we also need to get our power. Now, for power, I think what I'll end up doing is just attaching a solar panel directly over here and letting it run during the day and the uh, morning, but not during the night when I don't have power. That way I don't have to worry about setting up a whole bunch of power cables and risking a bunch of leaks that I then have to go track down. It should be a smidge easier for me to deal with. Just a smidge. I don't know. Maybe? Eh. It's worth a shot. You know? Now let's see, I need my RC transport, which is currently gathering up materials and bringing them back, so that's good. We'll drop off what I can, but I need to bring some stuff over here to work on this water extractor. Some concrete and some machine parts are needed. Now I'm really loath to have to deal with a lot of machine parts, only because these things are very valuable to me, very expensive, maintenance is going to suck. At least until I get to such a point where I can have enough income to buy a few things if I find myself in dire straits. But at least right now, there's nothing I, really I can do about it. You were gonna go ahead and turn off. No reason to have you there. We honestly only need one shift with the Moxie because we should be able to generate plenty of oxygen at this stage of the game. I really don't think we have a lot to worry about. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do this. There we go. So that'll all be attached like so. It should have power able to go through it, blah, blah, blah. Water tower's done. I actually am tempted to say we should just go ahead and set up a second water tower preemptively. 
uh, as long as it's within range. And the reason for that being, um, you always need a lot more water than you think. Like, you think you got a good stockpile of water, but you're probably wrong. You probably need like three or four times more than that. So I just kind of preemptively would like to just go ahead and have plenty of water. Also, with the extractor doing its thing, I mean, we should be able to fill these up fairly quickly. That's more concrete than I needed, but all right. We'll go ahead and unload some of that. Oh, we also need some metals. Hang on. So grab a few metals. That should be more than enough. Bring it over here. We're going to go ahead and unload some resources like so. Starting with the metals. There's China getting their uh, first round of humans. Again, at one-third the time it took me, because that's just how the game works. It's unfair in that way, really. All right, that should be enough. And then we bring you back. Okay. Glad to have an RC transport. Um, really love having things like shuttles to make this extremely automated and not have to worry about it, but you know, what can you do? RC Commander, time to get over here. There should be enough resources to go around. We want to start gathering up some of that water and start filling up my water tanks. We have basically two days before our colonists are going to arrive. And by the way, in order to get this milestone, it's not just that the rocket has to be in orbit. We have to have landed the dang thing. So we're really going to be cutting it close. That's one of the reasons I'm a little... A little bit concerned. Uh, can we set down like a little rocket over here? Like a landing pad, please? Let's just go ahead and do that. It only takes 10 concrete. I'd rather just go ahead and have it ready. Any other materials we can get? Yes, bring them over here. You know what I'd love to find? Polymers on the surface of the planet, anywhere. That would be great. Polymers really would be fan flip fantastic right about now, but oh well. Hey, a new anomaly. Way down over here. Well, thank you, Meteor Storm. You're too far away for me to do just about anything about it. Let's sigh. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead and continue scanning out some of these areas. I have no idea where the other anomalies are going to be. I know there's usually a ton on this side of the map. If I could honestly use my RC commander to get another ramp over here, I could open up a ridiculous number of anomalies, including probably some breakthroughs or at least just some free science. And given that I only get 400 science per soul without some um, outsourcing, that's, that's going to be a thing. We'll go ahead and turn you off there, no longer needed, and we can go ahead and pull back with the RC Commander. Let's continue working on the ramp. Oh, we also should, let's see. Yeah, you're already turned on during the morning shift, so we'll start stashing up some oxygen. Never mind, we need to turn you on first. There we go. Let's start getting a surplus of oxygen. Now we are starting to get a bit of extra stored water. Fantastic. All right, so we're in a pretty good spot. Soon-ish, I will want to turn on this farm in order to start growing some crops. Let's see, the rest of these... Oh, wait, the infirmary needs to have only three jobs. We want to have somebody working every individual ship, uh, shift. Now, oh, anomalies. Hello, where, where, where? Oh, two more down here. Would you look at that? The meteors have been kind. It's unfortunate that they're so far away. Anyways, you who? Um, yeah, so it would be really great if I could find a breakthrough. Because a breakthrough is going to determine whether or not we're going to succeed at this series, to be honest. You really need to get a good first breakthrough of some sort. Otherwise, it's pretty darn hard. I won't say impossible, just really, really hard to beat. But getting a good uh, a breakthrough, kind of like what we did in the last series with having, let's say, our extractors getting to run for free, that was huge! I could get all these uh, rare metals and start making money, you know? Hey, look! An anomaly. Let's see, we'll go ahead and send you over here. Okay, seems reasonable enough. There's another Vista up over here, I haven't forgotten about that. Look at all the meteors! Yeah, that's right, you stay freaking far away from me. Drones and rovers move faster, that's nice. What else do we get? Storages? Do not care, not even a little bit. Drone hubs would be nice if only I had things like electronics, which I do not, so that does me very little good. We can start working on the low-G high-rise. Um, low-G turbines wouldn't be bad either. I think that's a higher priority in case we end up having a sandstorm and I'm unable to sustain my power because of the solar turns off. Having a single wind turbine with the low G polymers during a sandstorm can provide a ridiculous amount of power. And that can be very, very, very helpful. Oh, something else we're gonna need up over here. Dumping sites. Let's not forget that we're gonna end up generating waste rock that has to occasionally get unclogged from the system. Thank you. Let's go ahead and move the RC command over here, because I'd like to go ahead and get all this rock and just go ahead and move it over in this direction. Making good progress on this ramp. Uh, it's going to be a while before it's done, but we're making good progress for sure. I have no idea if there's anything down here. Usually there's not a lot down in this crater. So it's not very exciting. It's just the one that's immediately accessible within my drone hub and sometimes just going to have to be good enough. 83, 84 now percent progress on arriving. Very good. We found a uranium-rich hematite. Let me guess. It's this thing over here? Yes, it was. All right, what do we get? 
Uh, rich metals or rare metals? Probably the rare metals. Um, I find that usually to be better. Hey, look, there's a research site here too, so we can place a dome in this area. And actually, it'd be pretty good. In fact, usually in my test games, I assume this is still static, there's usually another research site right up over here. Which means, um, two research sites plus rare metals. This would be an unbelievably good spot for a medium dome someday in the future. But it is not this day! This day, we sit back and pray that the game is kind to me. Are thou serious? Two more anomalies? For real? There are four research anomalies over here. That is so much free science sitting around waiting to be grabbed. Gosh, if only I didn't have to build so many dang ramps! Mm, okay, um, you know, it would be really cool, like really cool, if we could possibly, someday in the near-ish future, build a ramp that goes from here up to here. It would take... Not much waste rock, to be honest. This wouldn't be hard for me to do if we could get our RC commander off in this direction. Oh, our people have arrived. Crap, we need to go do that right now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Go land. I just realized, crap, I don't know how long they've been there. Hopefully not for very long. Please tell me you are going to arrive before Soul 15. We've got hours. Hours for you to arrive. They're here. Hang on. Oh, it says we haven't done it, but we've totally done it. All right, new beginning. Uh, this is great. So we've entered the founder stage of the game. It's fun because it's irrelevant because, um, well, we don't need the founder stage of the game because, um, well, <laughs> we can't ever have another rocket, so it, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, do we want to start working on soul be uh, soybeans? It would take five souls to get 40 food. I'm a little concerned about that. I mean, eight food per soul is pretty good. This is slightly more food. The only downside is wheat does not improve the soil quality, but I think we kind of have to live with that. So let's go ahead and start growing some wheat. And let's see, these um, jobs need food delivered, but my drones will take care of that. So the next thing to do really is just get this farm up and a running. All right, so Soul 15 will start up in any minute. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, there we go. Goal completed. Hooray! Anyway, what I was trying to say is try to get these ramps set up. And they should be relatively easy for me to do if they don't take a lot of waste rock. And then we go for something. Ooh, this is a, that one's a big one, unfortunately. If we can find other ramps, though, I would love nothing better than to give my RC Explorers the opportunity to grab all five of these anomalies over here. And then once this is done, I can just start scanning this area, and I've got so many more to work with. It really would be flippin' fantastic. All right, hi, Founders. Make me proud, because for the love of God, you are our literal only hope. Start making babies, like, right now! Get to it! It's your only job! It's not really, but it's your primary job. Please, get to it! Um, the good news is, even with uh, not a lot of sexy traded characters, take a look at our uh, comfort. Our comfort rating is default at 70. 70 comfort. That is more than enough to start getting some sort of positive uh, birth rate. Not huge, but enough to grow the population, not merely replace it. I call that an absolute win. You know, something we could consider doing is maybe go ahead and launch our rockets to find a planetary breakthrough. New technologies, ooh, there we go. Yeah, we could just go ahead and do that. Take the Trailblazer, launch it, see if we can go ahead and unlock our first breakthrough and pray that it's something amazing. Uh, I mean, what else am I doing with that fuel right now? It's not like I'm gonna be sending any rare metals back to Earth anytime soon or picking up passengers, uh, though obviously I'd like to have the rocket back on Earth because it's probably cheaper to do that than keep sending supply pods. But nonetheless, finding our first breakthrough might give us a clue as to what's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and launch it. It's already full of fuel, might as well. Godspeed, bring back something amazing. Um, It is not... Okay, it's pretty good, but it is not amazing for me right now. Research lab and Hawking Institute getting extra research points. Like, that is actually gonna be very good at some point. Is it good for me right now? No. No, it doesn't do me any good at all. What is wrong here? Oh, good lord, what happened to my drone hub? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Drone commander, get back over here, please. Or actually, can any of you guys, like, I don't know, repair this thing? We have electronics. <gasps> I don't have electronics. Are you serious? I don't have a single electronic. Right. You know, I did kind of forget that these do require electronics. Great. So I need to go ahead and immediately spend some of my money getting electronics. We'll probably need some polymers, machine parts, and stuff too. Might as well fill this thing out. Um... I'm kind of honestly leaning toward machine parts being a higher priority right now. 
Only because I think we're going to go through more of these than we are on polymers. At least for the moment. Right, alright. So we have to launch this. Um, never mind with the RC commander. Go ahead and stay where you are. Turns out that's fine. Um, yeah, I forgot. Right. We've, we brought only five electronics. I forgot about that, and we spent all of them building up these sensor towers. So now we've got none. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this is, this is admittedly a small problem. These drones are going to start running out of battery power and having no way to be controlled or do just about anything. But the good news is this stuff is going to arrive pretty quick. The glitter hoof. What do you know? What else we find? Hey, look, another anomaly. Excellent. Get up over here and tell me you can find something useful. How about like, I don't know, a tech cost reduction for everything. Yeah, that'd be nice. Also, we are starting to run low on power. The wind turbine I built here gets me most of the way there, but it is barely enough power to keep me afloat. Right, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun too. Alright, so we can go ahead and return the trailblazer, though I think I'm actually gonna leave it there because it has three drones that are fully charged, just in case every single drone I've got runs out of battery right now, and I can't repair this thing when the supply pod arrives. Cause that would be unfortunate now, wouldn't it? I don't anticipate it being a problem, but we'll see. I'm clearing out some excess race rock over here and immediately placing it to start building up this ramp. Wouldn't mind getting access to three anomalies. That's going to be something like 1,500 science or so for free, which will give me one of my techs right off the bat. That's not half bad. Oh, Martian University, I do want you so badly, but can I use you right now? Absolutely not. I cannot. I don't have enough space for it, for one. That's a thing. But yeah. You know something else I would like to get? More concrete. More concrete would allow me to place down another one of these micro domes. And we do want this. Badly, Dost, I want this. Um, uneven terrain. Really? Where? It seemed like it was fine to me. Mm, whatever. Anyway, the idea being, uh, hook these two up. We'll have more space for housing and stuff. But also, we'll be able to start working on things like that rare metals extracting. And if I am unable to get uh, some additional power, sorry, not power, money. If I'm unable to get some additional money, I think we're going to find ourselves in a really bad spot pretty quickly in this game. Uh, this, you know, placing it close by so it's in range of the other heater would be amazing, wouldn't it? Holy crap, we could do this. That's ridiculous. That's probably too ridiculous, isn't it? Well, maybe. Huh. Well, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be in range if we did that, so we'll do- we'll end up doing something like this, probably. But yeah. I'm not gonna build it this second, I just wanna go ahead and have it placed, same with this. Just so I don't lose track of where I want things to go. Alright? Seems important. Let's go ahead and place down this supply pod, let's return my rocket. Get the drones to gather up those electronics. Go fix up our drone hub, and everything will be back up and a running as before. First Martian born, we have a baby! Huzzah! So the founder stage is over. If only that meant that I would be able to, you know, get more people, but I cannot. Uh, we are almost done with these crops, by the way. 10.7 food is not a lot. I think it's barely enough to sustain me. We take up what? Three or four food per day? And if I'm making something on average like five, we'll slowly start stockpiling up from some food, but not a lot. All right, we gain money. Hey! 400 million dollars. That's fine. I'll take it. Absolutely. That gives me a little bit more breathing space as far as buying some needed specialist uh, components. Because it's going to be a while before I can manufacture any of this myself. Because, I mean, when am I going to have the population to justify it? You know? Not until we have several more babies. And actually, now that we're starting to get some babies, that's a good excuse to go ahead and start building out this microdome soon. Because I could place down, like, a playground over here. Like, I know I could, but... I mean, we're gonna need a place to keep our kids and let them play and actually build up some good traits. That's gonna be very important for me in the near future. Oh, good lord. Alright, Dust Devil formed an anomaly location. It should be, like, right over here, because I actually finished building the ramp! And then it's gonna immediately get hit, isn't it? Run, little explorer! Run away! Get away from there! Very soon, you're going to turn into nastiness. Alright, run over this way. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite me in some way. Try to get some of these anomalies researched, if and you please. I don't actually see any dust devils. You know how weird that is? I'm not seeing a single dust devil. You know what also I'm noticing? I'm not even seeing a single frost patch on the map. I think there's usually two. Usually off in these two areas. Huh. Do you think that's a bug? Or is that like a feature of this map? No dust devils? That can't be right though. 
Wait, did something happen when I reloaded the game for this video and it got rid of Dust Devils? Is that possible? It feels possible, but I don't know. Uh, reducing the amount of fuel required for things like our rocket actually will make that a lot more cost effective. Extractor amplification will let us extract a lot more water at the cost of power, but power is cheap compared to machine parts, so I don't know, there's something to be said about that. I did get rid of this moxie to move it over here, just so I would have room to place down a tunnel until I realized, oh right, I don't have the deconstruction protocols to actually, you know, get rid of a building, including this fountain, by the way, so I won't be able to connect these even if I wanted to. Which I consider a little bit on the unfortunate side, but alrighty. Yeah, sure, why not? It'll probably be fine. Comfort rating has dropped down to 68, still in a reasonable spot. If you really want to force the issue and have lots of births, easiest way to do that, actually, is to go for an arts workshop, which uh, gets 80 service comfort for every person that visits. So, you know, an average comfort rating of about 80 is pretty solid. But the only downside is it costs you a load of polymers. And if you don't have fantastic polymer production, it's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. So, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily what I want to shoot for, but something to consider. If I feel like I'm getting in a desperate spot and if I've got enough polymers to last, I might very well have to build one just to get those berths back up and a running. We will see. I also had a very brief moment of hypothermia because I ran out of power with the addition of this moxie and a very minor amount of power being taken for the shift. Like right now, we are at kind of perfect equilibrium when it comes to power. Actually, why is this acting as if we don't have enough power generation? This can't be right. Hang on. We need to build up another another one or two of these uh, solar panels. We should have enough power generation. Why are we not getting enough anymore? Did I build something else that's taking power? During the night? No? No, this should all be fine. This isn't attached. You're still off at night. You're not that bad. I feel like I'm not generating enough power. I'm a little concerned. We'll build up one more solar panel and just kind of get a little bit more of a buffer building up into this battery. But I may need to turn a few things off tonight as an emergency uh, situation to make sure that I don't run out of power for Adarka. Every time we run out of power, you know, like life support gets turned off, people have a tendency to kind of freak out. And it reduces sanity and morale and comfort and pretty much everything. It's really terrible. You shouldn't do it. So we're looking forward to getting rid of some of that if we can. Uh, up over here, we are building another ramp, or at least we will be in a minute. I just had to clear some gunk out of our water extractor. This is a much cheaper ramp for me to build than one down over here, believe it or not. So it'll unlock this area sooner. And that's some research done. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So we got that. Hey, decommission protocol. This is actually something I needed in order to salvage and destroy buildings so we can get things connected. And the reason I want things connected is because I don't want to have to build all these services over here again. I want people to be able to live in this dome or this one and kind of go back and forth to jobs, including the rare metals extractor, and enjoy each other's services. It will just make everything a little bit better. So that's why I want to get a tunnel. It just helps. It just helps a smidge. We'll see, though. In the meantime, I think we need to be ending up this video. We do seem to have enough power we can survive through the night because a lot of my stuff is currently turned off at night, which is kind of fine with me. Uh, we did reduce that fuel requirement back down to 60, so we're only now getting to a point where our rocket costs as much as it usually would if we weren't playing as Paradox. Ugh! How rough is that? Very fun. There's the anomaly. There's the decommission protocol. What else did we get? Polymer factories. We should go ahead and research this. Not that I fully expect to take advantage of it as much as I'd like to have the option in the event that we find ourselves desperately running out of such things as polymers. After that, I don't know, I'm never going to use low-G fungi. I guess we can go ahead and start working on magnetic filtering. And this drone hub tech exists just to absorb some buffer science in the event that I have more than I have queued up. Because I don't want to go into recon and expansion, that's a waste. I can't build these, but I might as well go ahead and make use of some of that, right? Though one could argue that an even better spot would be something like the extractor amplification in case I need some of that. We will see. For now, though, I think it's time for me to end up this video. So we've made some progress. For real, um, if I can get this ramp built up, I want all this scanned. Like, I really think there's going to be a ton of anomalies in that area. It always has been, as far as my personal experience. And with a single berth, I mean, we're getting there. I'd really love to have a lot more, though. So, get to it, people. It's time to populate the planet. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.